The Forward Thinker Show is available wherever you listen to your podcasts. Hey, it's Coral, and welcome to The Forward Thinker Show, the podcast where we share the stories and expertise of global leaders in business and technology. Today, we're joined by Fernando Asanza, student leader at Startup FIU and incoming Microsoft intern. Welcome. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited to have you here, Fernando. I'm excited to be here with you. I know, I know. Like, the, like the reason why I, I, I chose you for this is because I noticed that he's here at Startup FIU a lot, even before you even started working here. And he's just like, the way he thinks is just, it's just different. Like, every time I see you speak at this, um, there's this, this, like, weekly event at Startup FIU called Hacker Nation. And he just, like, every time he's there, he's always explaining something even better and beyond. And now, now you're going to explain your big ideas at Microsoft now. So congratulations again. Thank you very much. Yeah. You very much. And you also run the Student Idea Circle. Yes, every here. Monday at 3.30. Here yes, at here FIU. at Startup FIU. So... I mean, man, you you've done all of this. I, I want to know. I want to get from the beginning. Like, where are you? Let Let's start it off um, with your story. Where are you from, and how did you get interested into computer science? So I am from a little town in Ecuador. It's called Loja. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very cold town. And at three years old, I moved to Guayaquil, which is the big city. Mm. And then, well, I started studying a little bit there until I was nine. Then I moved five years to Guatemala losing all my friends, my family. Oh, my God. They, they stay in Ecuador, but me and my main family, of course, my, my mom, my dad, my sister, and my brother, we moved to Guatemala. Mm -hmm. uh, I almost graduated there. Then we came back and ended up graduating in Ecuador. At the beginning, I was like, wow, so what, what do I do? Picture mm -hmm. this. I'm senior senior high school student in Ecuador, mm -hmm. and my brother went to study in Spain. Mm -hmm. He's a doctor now. Wow. And I was like, okay, I don't like medicine. <laughs> what, 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 should, what, should, what should I do? And then I started asking for advice to my, to my dad, to different professors, to see what they were saying. And the main conclusion was, you, you're going to go study something that's going to open more doors for you because in, in the places that we're right now, mm -hmm. in how, how the world is going, everything's going to change. Everything's going to get disrupted. So choose a career that you can disrupt and not not get disrupted by mm. that was that was what my teacher said choose a career that you can disrupt and not get disrupted by yeah that's that's a good quote that's, that's <laughs> a good teacher there. yeah it's a it's a great teacher it's a yeah. great teacher yeah so yeah it's, it was um sorry before <laughs> starting my senior year it was around midnight <laughs> um, I didn't have anything to do. I was in YouTube, and then I found a video that explained computer science really well. I, I look at it. It was, I think, computer science explained for kids. Mm. And, and <laughs> yeah, that's why it was explained very well. Yeah. If you're going to explain it to kids, it has to be very well explained. Mm. So I watched it. I had, it got my it got my interest. I got me interested. So now I start to, le I start to search for, okay, what is programming? What mm -hmm. can I be learning in programming? And I found a YouTube video, a Python tutorial of one hour. Mm -hmm. for beginners mm -hmm. that same night i did it like i i stayed up to almost 2 3 a.m just watching it mm -hmm. and what i liked the most was not the actual coding and typing all the numbers and mm -hmm. integers and flows uh, what i liked the most was the application that that had mm -hmm. or the explanations that what i was doing mm -hmm. have in the real world like where can they be used so i liked it and when i went to my senior year in high school I was kind of like decided that I want to go something between this realm of computer science. I kept asking for advice to, to my dad. He's an engineer, an MBA, so he, he kind of knows a little bit about, about the new technologies because he's self-learning a lot, mm -hmm. uh, and also to my teachers. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Now, how does that translate to me being here at FIU studying computer science now? If before I was set to go, I was set to go directly to Spain, mm -hmm. but I, again, I did more research on, and I saw that education here at, at the U.S. It will be, it, it has more emphasis on hands-on experiences mm -hmm. and connect you with companies and experience with companies. And it sounds something a, a little bit more fun to me. Yeah. So that's how I decided that I wanted to come here. And now I'm here sitting here with you in Miami. That's crazy. <laughs> 
That's that's great, Fernando. You just explained about like computer science, right? And I think one of the things about computer science students that they there, there's an interest that some computer science students want to dwell into, and that is entrepreneurship. Yeah. And that is it's 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 kind of like you you watch one video of Mark Zuckerberg, and you're just like, yeah. After this, I'm gonna start my own business. I'm gonna do this and that. But like, uh, you've explained like you've had experiences using your technical background in like pitch competitions and hackathons, right? Yes. And now you're running the student idea circle, which is, could you explain what that is? So basically student idea circle is a round table where students from different disciplines, different majors, mm -hmm. just gather up together and we discuss any projects or startup ideas or any problems that uh, these students are facing and mm -hmm. they will want some feedback from our students. Mm -hmm. uh, so being around table, everyone has a word mm -hmm. in the table and everyone can have their opinion and can help each other. Mm -hmm. uh, so for those who have the project ideas, they can get feedback from others as well as the startup ideas or those who just need to make more connections. Mm -hmm. uh, very it's very important here to make, to make connections. Um, that will help you get different opportunities. So that's my main focus on student idea circle, like mm -hmm. that every student that comes can at least live with some new opportunity or something new to research on. Yeah. And and that is done not just by me, but by making everyone talk. Yeah. yeah. That's really important that you're able to provide a space for somebody to share their ideas and get feedback on it. And that's, and that's um, you would say, is something that a, a regular day-to-day -day entrepreneur does. Like what they are is like, they just have an idea and a vision. And so one, uh, what I wanted to ask you today is sort of like, what is entrepreneurship and what are some of the common misconceptions that most people have about it? Okay, so the most common misconceptions that people have about an entrepreneurship is that you need to start a business mm. or you need to, uh, yeah, get some profit and get some money, mm -hmm. get some grind done and whatever, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. just, you don't need to be, you don't need to start a business to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. You can be an entrepreneur starting with your mindset. And that's what we, that's what we preach at Startup for You, that's what we <laughs> teach you. Uh, starting with your mindset. Mm -hmm. And your mindset can be, that mindset can be applied to everything that you're working on. Uh, and of course it's included, a possible business idea that mm -hmm. you can develop. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that's basically about it. And if we're gonna talk about the mindset of entrepreneur, uh, here we have broken it down into three main things. Mm -hmm. First one is having a, a beginner mindset, mm -hmm. which means you, you, you know that you don't know everything. So okay. you, even though you're experienced in the field, you adapt a beginner's mindset, and thanks to that, you become curious. You become mm -hmm. like a kid. A kid is curious. Mm -hmm. He wants to figure things out. He doesn't want to read instructions, he wants to start doing stuff. Mm -hmm. and, by, and for that, he starts asking questions. The kids start asking questions. So that's what adapting a beginner's mindset does. Uh, for me, uh, it meant that when I came to FIU, I already did a bunch of research into the university and in the school that, that was done. So I kind of knew a, a little bit about everything. However, I, I was still thinking, no, I need to learn more, but directly from the people. Mm -hmm. So think that curiosity took me to, oh, what does Startup for you is? What, what is Startup for you? I want to come here. So by a Monday, a Monday that I arrived at FIU, by Wednesday, I was already here at Hacker Nation, one of the main, one of the signature events at Startup for you. And I stayed 50 minutes after just talking to the people, talking to the people there, being curious about what they were doing in high school, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, what they were doing in college, uh, what projects are they working on, what are they interested in, what are researching, just just being curious about their lives. And and then you start, uh, you start with, with that being curious, adapting your mindset, you know that you don't know everything, so you start asking questions. And, and then you found good sources of information, which can be people. Mm -hmm. Which takes us to the second, the second mindset that you need to have is being coachable as mm -hmm. an entrepreneur. So you start by be having a beginner's mindset. Mm -hmm. Then you go, I don't know this. I should be learning it. Maybe I should get someone to teach me. Mm 
mm-hmm. or or something like that. And that's how you become coachable. You become coachable because you don't know you know that you don't know everything. So then you start learning from other people. And this this can be translated to having mentors mm-hmm. and and things like that. But honestly, for me, from my experiences that I that I have lived here, I never asked someone, "Will you be my mentor?" Mm-hmm. or something like that. I consider I have plenty of mentors, <laughs> but it's because I I just go and ask them for advice, mm-hmm. just casual, just as this podcast being casual. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just go and ask them for advice, and then I t- I take all that feedback and I I see what I can learn from it. Mm-hmm. But I, I never go directly to to go ask them, would you mentor me or in something like an official way? No, it's more done how I can be, how I can be learning from others, mm-hmm. how I can be learning from my connections. Mm-hmm. Uh, that way I, I get the most out of the information. That's so interesting that you, when you are looking for advice, you're, you're, your approach is more what can I learn from you and not what can I get from you. Because if you get an advisor, then it's like, what can I get for you? Oh, I can get a referral from you. And I can boost myself up and do blah, 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 blah. But your your mindset is more, no, what can I learn from this? What can I learn from you? And how can I apply it to my life? Yeah. It's very interesting. And mm-hmm. Yeah, and we can connect that with entrepreneurial mindset. So if you have a beginner mindset and then you're very coachable, you will start meeting new people. Mm-hmm. And then and then as you, as you grow your connections with them, mm-hmm. the more connections you have, the more information you will start to get. Mm. How this applied to me, I I start getting more information from other seniors or junior students, mm-hmm. more experienced than me, and in that those connections, in my network, in my network that I had, I, I was gaining a lot of information. But what I wanted, uh, I didn't want to keep it to myself, of course. So I shared it with other students that entered with me. Mm. So while I was growing, they mm-hmm. were growing, mm. and while they keep growing, they keep gaining more information. And that information kept coming back to me mm-hmm. because I, the relation that we have in, in this network, in these connections. And this is something very interesting. It can be connected also to creativity. Mm. Uh, at Star FIU here, we did, we did a workshop on creativity. And we defined it that creativity is basically uh, the ability to connect two or different things and find a surprising connection between each other. Mm. Now, what are these different things? We call it dots. But what are dots? Dots can be people, ideas, and experiences. Mm. Yeah, we broke it down in those three. So the more people, ideas, and experiences you have, the more connections you can make. Mm. And the more connections you can make, the more creativity you have. Mm. That's how we define it. I, I noticed that in your story, you mentioned how you just watched one hour of Python because you were curious about it. Mm. And you learned about programming. At that time, you were never even thinking about having an entrepreneurial mindset or being an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. but it helped you in that moment to be curious to learn how to program better. What are some other benefits of having an entrepreneurial mindset? So, uh, yeah, that's that's a big, a big benefit. Mm-hmm. The other one is the more curious you are, of course, the more people you meet. Mm-hmm. And, and then you start seeing things uh, that maybe other people are not seeing. Mm-hmm. One example that I have actually right now is that a good friend of mine just told me every time I check a WhatsApp group mm-hmm. of any club or organization at FIU, I just see your number in it. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they just told me that. And they are surprised <laughs> about it. And I'm like, wow, maybe, maybe there's a connection there. Yeah. So now I'm thinking whenever I go around campus, mm-hmm. I always, I'm always looking at almost everything. Every single flyer, every single screen, mm-hmm. every single person uh, saying something in their tables mm-hmm. and I'm I'm doing little little research about it like just scanning the QR codes that they have just so I can stay informed mm-hmm. is I think that correlates to just being curious mm-hmm. where you go I know there's plenty of people that miss opportunities mm-hmm. just because they are not curious enough maybe they're looking for something maybe they're looking for an internship maybe they're looking for a career fair mm-hmm. and they didn't know that if you look at a screen mm-hmm. in, in one place it says where the career fair is mm-hmm. stuff like that in my first semester, I went to a career fair just because I saw in the floor that it says career fair August mm-hmm. 20 something. And I'm like, well, I should go. And, and, <laughs> and I start, I start learning how to talk to recruiters, how to, how to ask for the advice mm-hmm. and how to even build a resume mm-hmm. uh, when you're in a, in a first semester. So 
yeah, it actually correlates a lot to just finding opportunities or finding things that are interested that spark your interest. You research more into that, and then you you can find amazing things to to do. Yeah, being curious is like so important. And I I noticed in your story you said that like you were just a part of like you were you did research on like every single club and you just went there. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you also said that some people just don't know. Yeah. There, there's a term for th- there's a term for like the information that people do know and then the information that don't know. Do you know about? Um, could you explain uh, asymmetry of information? Yeah, sure. So, asymmetry of information is basically you have two sides. You mm-hmm. either have the information or you don't have the information. Mm-hmm. If you were to gain the information, you can grab an insight from information Mm -hmm. and then find an opportunity and go capitalize on it. Mm -hmm. While the other people Mm -hmm. who don't have the information don't have the opportunity and can capitalize on it. Mm -hmm. And this actually explained very well in a tech talk, in a tech talk by Roy Hacker, where he explains how basically poor can, poor people can overcome poverty. Mm -hmm. And he's basically by gaining information. If I gain more information than you, I make you poor. Mm -hmm. That's basically what it is. So mm-hmm. in this case, uh, the more information you have, the more opportunities you can get, mm-hmm. and the more y- opportunities you can capitalize on it, mm-hmm. and so and be successful. <sighs> well, Fernando, we were just talking about asymmetry of information and how having more information can help you prepare, propel you to get more opportunities and things. You know, because there are people who just don't, who really they just don't know, and because they don't know. They don't, they don't, they don't, they don't get anything out of it. But you were in an Ecuador, and like uh, there's a lot of people in Ecuador who don't know about the opportunities that they can get, even outside their country. But it was because you were curious, and having that beginner's mindset, it helped you go past that. What you said, you said it was a barrier, right? Like there's two barriers. You were able to cross it by being curious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is there? Um, are there anything other parts on to on the entrepreneurial mindset that we haven't touched yet? Yeah. So the first one is basically beginner's mindset. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't know what you don't know. Mm-hmm. So then you start being curious, asking questions, mm-hmm. and then you start learning by being coachable. Mm-hmm. And once you learn and you grab the insight, you have to actually do stuff, action. Mm-hmm. And it's something that in design thinking we call it bias towards action, mm-hmm. which means just a uh, go and do a rapid prototyping, do a rapid testing, see if it works so you can continue. If it doesn't work, pivot. Mm-hmm. And once you combine those three things, you have basically an entrepreneur. Uh, entrepreneurs pivot all the time. And actually, with this, I, I want to say an example of a successful entrepreneur, Jeff Hoffman. Mm-hmm. Uh, he came to start a f- to start FIU and to FIU to give some talks, and he mentioned this cool story on how uh, a person that doesn't have the entrepreneurial mindset acts versus how someone that does mm-hmm. acts. So the the story goes like this. A, a person goes around their daily life, sees a problem, and they complain about it. They wish there was a, a better way to do it, but then just don't do anything about it. Mm-hmm. They come back home, complain to maybe their wife, their partner, their friends, but then continue their day last, like nothing happened. Versus someone that is an entrepreneur and now has the entrepreneur mindset, goes through a day, they find a problem, and then they ask others, hey, do you have the same problem? Mm-hmm. If the answer is yes, then they go like, okay, then what's, what solutions have you tried or what solutions are out there? Because I keep getting this problem and I want to solve it, you know? I, I want to be able to pass through this. They say, and if, they are, if there's no problem at all, if there's no, sorry, if there's no solution, if the answer is no, mm-hmm. then the entrepreneur goes, okay, then I'm not going to... S- stand here, I'm going to go and do the solution that needs to be done to solve this problem. Now, the example that Jeff puts is that one day he was uh, going to the airport and he stand a long line uh, just to get the boarding pass Mm -hmm. printed uh, by the lady in the front desk. Mm -hmm. And once he get there, he saw the lady just pressing a button and, and Jeff asked her, so you would just make me do this entire unnecessary line just for you to press a button and mm-hmm. give me a paper? She was like, yes, that's how it's done. He asked others in the line, 
does this bother anyone else? Mm -hmm. Yes, of course it does. Is there a better way to do it? Can they just give us the printer right in front of us? Mm -hmm. No, that's not how it's done. So then he goes at it. He starts researching on how to do, how to solve this problem. And now we have the boarding pass printers in airports right now. Mm -hmm. He created those and patented those and making basically our lines shorter now mm -hmm. <laughs> in airports. That's an example of how someone can, of someone that has entrepreneurial mindset, is curious about it, mm -hmm. wants to solve the problem, and actually goes get and goes and go yeah. to get it. So, I know it's kind of uncomfortable to take action. It's it's like it's something that um, even I struggled with it as well. Have you ever like struggled with taking action? For sure, like mm -hmm. I. I kind of do it all the time. Mm -hmm. It's always just saying yes to be here right mm -hmm. now. It already took me out of my comfort zone. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> but from my past experiences, I know that getting out of my comfort zone has been very beneficial to me. Mm -hmm. So I was like, might as well just get out of that place again. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's getting out of my comfort zone is how I got into, um, into Microsoft now for the summer. Wow. This is actually kind of like a cool story. Last semester, mm -hmm. there was this huge hackathon, like the biggest in South Florida, done by Init, mm -hmm. a nonprofit organization that started here at FIU. Mm -hmm. Great organization. Mm -hmm. They <laughs> go Panthers. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, Init does this hackathon every single fall. For this fall, I already had like my experiences done. I already had a like, cool resume mm -hmm. and everything. So I was kind of thinking, why would I want to go and have a bad time hacking and and doing all these times like. Not not having a bad time, but having an uncomfortable situation where you actually have to put in more work in a weekend, mm -hmm. where you could be resting for the uh, for <laughs> for the whole week. I was doubting myself mm -hmm. if I should go. I was thinking I already have enough experiences, and I just want to rest. Mm -hmm. But then I remember why I came here to the U.S. and I, I I didn't came here to rest or anything like that. I no. came here to do to do the most. Mm -hmm. to, if I if there's an opportunity and I can go do it i have the experience to do it and i have the knowledge to do it and i don't do it i will regret mm -hmm. so um, i got off my comfort zone and i went there and actually i went because we were having a google workshop here at star mm -hmm. fiu and a friend that and a friend that we work at a past project came and asked mm -hmm. me hey are you going to shahax mm -hmm. i was like mm, not really and i explained my reasons mm -hmm. and then he told me oh because i wanted to work on this idea and when i heard the idea i was like Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the it, feedback. I, yeah, I, I I was not comfortable of him doing that, oh. but I actually had brainstormed an idea before, mm -hmm. so I had it in my mind already. So I told I told him about the idea. He loved it, and he was going to actually go do it with his other two partners. But he mm -hmm. told me you should come with us. I was still doubting. I wanted to rest that weekend. I don't know if mm -hmm. I needed another project. <laughs> mm. So I said, we'll see. That, we'll was, that was a Thursday. <laughs> that was a Thursday. Hackathon was Friday. <laughs> so, so by Friday, I was. I decided I was gonna go to Shahak's, but just for the main hours, mm -hmm. and for the career fair, just to see everyone, see my yeah. friends, see the see the career fair, mm -hmm. but not actually compete. I didn't like. Mm -hmm. I felt so uncomfortable, so nervous to go and compete again. But when I saw my friends, I saw the team. We had idea. We had everything. We just had to execute. Mm -hmm. So. That's why I did. I, I stayed there and we executed the idea. We end up winning second place. Wow. It was absolutely amazing. That it was a beautiful experience, honestly. And it couldn't be done if I didn't let my my comfort zone before. So now every time that I have that I see an opportunity that is gonna make me nervous mm -hmm. or maybe I should just rest or I should mm -hmm. focus on other stuff. I think of my past experiences and mm -hmm. I say almost every time I left my I left my comfort zone, something was happened to me. So might as well do it again. That's good. It's kind of like you don't take the fear as a way to hold back, but more as an indicator of 
if I'm scared, then this is good. This means that this is something that will challenge me. Because yeah. there's many things that you can do that don't challenge you as well. Like if I tell you right now, oh, you, you let's go do a, do make a like a three presentation on on creativity, then you can make it in like mm -hmm. three minutes. That's something easy for you. But if I tell you like, oh, Fernando, I want you to build a program for this big company, and I need it by tomorrow. That's not going to be exactly. Yeah, it's not going to be something that you'll be comfortable doing mm -hmm. or even going to a hackathon or things like that. So would you say to people who are scared to take action on an idea of, or something that they have is to just use the fear as an indicator to do it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, it has worked for me. I can advise from my own experiences that it has worked. Mm -hmm. But also if you if you look at the guidelines that we had in entrepreneurial mindset, mm -hmm. is beginner mindset, coachable mm -hmm. and go take action. Mm -hmm. If you miss the go take action, then you're not gonna see any any results into it. Mm -hmm. But the beautiful thing about this is that it doesn't have to you don't have to build a business or you don't have to build a project in one week. Mm -hmm. But you can build a small prototype, test mm -hmm. it, see if it works. If it works, cool, continue. Mm -hmm. Go at it. If it doesn't, see what happened mm -hmm. and pivot. That's the beautiful thing about entrepreneurship. Got to uh, pivot. You just got to pivot. Just mm. change the idea or see what went wrong. Mm. I think I think we've we've covered that taking action is important. Now, for the good part. There is some people who get analysis paralysis. They want to do before making an idea, they want to do research and research, research online and books and consultants and and other people, but they never but it, it, it actually entraps them kind of more. So what other ways could you get like real insights on your idea? So the single best way to get insights on the idea that you are thinking about is by actually going out and talk directly to people. Mm. And this is actually what we preach here at Startup for You, and this is what entrepreneurs do, even mm -hmm. if they didn't know about it, is is you just go out there, talk where your possible users are, mm -hmm. talk with people, see what problems they have, see what they will want, mm -hmm. see the, the needs that they have, mm -hmm. and then start problem solving mm -hmm. in them. This is actually called human-centered design, putting the human first and, and taking action uh, based on the problems, the needs, and what they will want. Mm -hmm. uh, there's actually a cool example from also Jeff Hoffman, <laughs> <laughs> he talked about when he met Sam Walton, the founder of Walmart. He told him that he built Walmart not by talking to all the business people, not by talking to the consultants and all that. Mm -hmm. He built Walmart by putting a hat, some jeans, and going out to coffee stores mm -hmm. and hang out with the people that will be his users for the retail stores. Mm -hmm. Hang out with them ask them questions, see what problems they currently have, see what they will need. Mm -hmm. And he eventually ended up building Walmart and Sam's Club right now. Wow, so, that's amazing. Yeah. Is there any way that you've applied human-centered design in your own projects or ideas? I would like to say for almost every project, I like to directly think on the person that I'm solving this for, mm -hmm. on the people that I'm solving this for, on the humans. Mm -hmm. Because if you're solving a problem, the problem is is faced by humans. Mm -hmm. And if you want to win, let's say, a competition or a hackathon, the best way to do it is solving a real problem. And that's actually the best way to also start a startup, mm -hmm. solving a real problem. And a good way to find real problems is by interviewing people, talking to people. Mm -hmm. For the projects that I that we did in in the hackathon, we directly talk with people, with the students, mm -hmm. see what problems they have, we grab our insight, and then we build upon that. Mm. So, yeah. I think it, it it is so important to talk to people and connect with people. What do you, why do you think it's more important to speak with the the users' problems than like going online? So whenever whenever you talk to someone, there's, you know, you, you probably know this more mm -hmm. or better than me, mm -hmm. is the <laughs> how they sit, how they go with your hands, mm -hmm. their tone, mm -hmm. 
Eh, are they nervous? Mm. Eh, are they telling the truth? Are they lying? <laughs> eh, and when you meet with people, mm -hmm. especially in casual ways, yeah. they're gonna talk to you casually, so they're gonna, hopefully they're gonna be saying the truth. Yeah. And when you ask them about past experiences, you actually make their brain work and tell you what exactly happened mm -hmm. or what they think they happened. So it's, it's important to research online and find the facts. Yeah. But if you're solving for people, you better go talk to them. Yeah. And, and they, will, they will tell you what their problem is if you ask the right questions. And, and you will have the solution for them. Yeah. It, it, it's like it's so it's so important to look at the person and not the, the the things that they do or the things that they have because that like let's say if if this person's just like oh yeah I'm a, I'm a tech consultant you just see that but you don't see like the person that they are like what are your real problems because mm -hmm. a lot of people they don't look at the people they just look at the names that they have but they don't look at the people mm -hmm. and when you when you connect with people and like they turn off the corporate mode when you if you're able to do that then you're going to be able to find the real problems that you can solve for others because a lot of people they put in a front of like hey how are you what good morning blah 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 and then you're like oh why did that happen why why is that such a problem for you oh i noticed that i noticed that you're 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 looking at your watch a lot is is there something going on and and they're like oh yeah i have this problem blah 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 blah, blah. and then you can keep going and actually get to the root of yeah. the problem there's actually a thing. really good book mm -hmm. on how to talk to possible customers how to talk to people and mm -hmm. see what problems they have it's called the mom test mm. and basically the book talks about how you can ask good enough questions that not even your mom can lie to you mm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's basically asking questions regarding the past mm -hmm. and mitigate bias as much as possible mm -hmm. with those. Yeah, I really recommend it, the mom test. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps you can put it somewhere there. Mm -hmm. uh, really good book. That's good. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it, it doesn't only apply for building a business idea. Exactly. It could also apply if you're, if you're get if you want to get an internship, you don't look at, like, you don't ask, you know, like, like online, you could just ask people who have done it before. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, and then if you're gonna talk with recruiters, you don't talk, you don't talk to them like, oh, I can I can do all of this from you. And, or you, you could just be like, oh, what can I learn from you? What are the struggles that your company is going through? And how can I be a solution for that? Like, what, what can I learn from the, from the problems that you that you guys are, are facing? And we're like, oh, we need X, Y, and Z. And so, oh, okay, then this is how I can come in and help you out. And that that you can apply that mindset in that time as well. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you feel like, because I guess engineers who are not from a Hispanic background, I I see a lot of Hispanic engineers. They tend to be more, you know, people friendly. Were were you ev were you ever like shy growing up, or were you social growing up? No, like, I was definitely super shy. Super up. shy. But, uh, let's not say super shy, honestly. Mm -hmm. But I, I didn't, I didn't consider myself an extrovert. Mm -hmm. And that's interesting because I see you everywhere, and you <laughs> always talking to people. So that's well, that's me getting out of my comfort zone. <laughs> 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 no, like honestly, and mm -hmm. I even took tests uh, mm -hmm. on my personality and everything. Like before coming here, mm -hmm. uh, in my in my senior year of high school. And they said that I was, oh, well, the numbers are good. 51% introvert <laughs> and 49% extrovert. But that was my, my senior year. Mm -hmm. And when I was actually like talking more with people and stuff, I mind that before it was much more introvert. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I, I've been shy. How do I overcome it? I just, I really find enjoyful moments talking with, with my friends. Mm -hmm. um, and then just um, be curious about the life of others. Mm -hmm. And that's how I got to meet you. Mm -hmm. That's how we are here right now. So <laughs> I think I think it has worked so far. So yeah, yeah, it has worked. And I I feel like we learned a lot today about applying entrepreneurial mindset and the benefits that it could not only have in your life, but also in like the business projects that you may be working on or the ideas that you may have. And it could help you a lot in the future. So um, thank you so much, Fernando. 
Thank for coming you, on. Cool. Is there anything I, I do want people to have the opportunity to pick your brain? So I'm going to give you this chance to promote anything or is there any way people can reach you? For sure. You can reach me through LinkedIn. It's just my name, Fernando Sansa. Just send me send me uh, any text. We'll talk. <laughs> yeah, I'm always happy to talk with, with <laughs> new people and especially if they want for advice or help or any type of help, mm -hmm. I find it very enjoyable to do it. So if something I said is spark interest in you and you want to know more or you want me to give you feedback or help in any type of way, just send me a text there. And also shout out to Sarah for you. This is the place where we're at right now. Yeah. And the place where I work at. So I. <laughs> He's on his lunch break. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are yeah. absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Thank you so much, Fernando. Of course. Thanks to you, Paul. Thank you for listening to The Forward Thinkers Show.